Hobie Doo is everyone's favorite boomer and vintage lens enthusiast. And today I want to discuss uh, 50 millimeter lenses and the uh, SMC Pentax M 1 to 2 50 millimeter. This one has a, a rubber uh, focusing ring on top of a metal ring. It has this silver uh, accent. It stops down to uh, F22. Opens the F2. It goes all the way down to uh, 0.45. Uh, what is that? <laughs> I don't even know. Meters. Okay. So what about this lens? Uh, I don't remember I got this lens. I might have got it on a camera, but it got dropped somehow. I don't know if I dropped it or someone else dropped it. Uh, let's see. It had a problem. Ah, see, it got hit right there on the filter ring. Let's see what happens here. Okay, it's not there. Ah, it rubs right here. So not only did it drop there, you can see there's a nick right here, but there's also a dent in the ring. Let's see if I can find that spot. During normal temperatures, that's like, you know, 55 to 80. There's no a hang up. When it gets a little bit colder, then it hangs up a little bit. What I did was I got a, a, a rubber mallet and a block of wood, and I put on a block of wood and I hit that spot. You can see where it's rubbing. Let's see if we can see that spot. I think it's right here, right there. It's got squished. So when it dropped, it hit there and squish the focusing ring. But if you look at the optics, the optics are beautiful. They are beautiful. Can you tell that that, that element is convex? See how uh, the one light that's a bar is convex, uh, how it performs? So that's a convex lens, typical convex lens. It's super clear. If you look through it, the optics are clear. Uh, it was in excellent shape mechanically, except for that mark there. And the fact that the, the focus, and it was almost unusable, so that's why I had to tap it. So, say if it was squished here, I had to tap it here or there to try and bring it back into round. And I was really wrapping away on it. I made a video about that. But uh, it set fallow for a long time, but today, uh, April the 6th, 2024, I went to the park and I stuck it on the Sony uh, Alpha 5000 or A5000. And uh, I stuck at f8 mostly, but it was uh, heavy overcast this morning, so I was able to open it up to f2 a couple times. And by using a, a, a low ISO and a high shutter speed, I was able to shoot it wide open. And this is one of the best lenses I have. I don't think I bought this lens, I think it came on some sort of Pentax film body. Uh, I may actually still have that camera. Uh, and I brought a couple of Pentax cameras. I'm going to tell you why am I into Pentax. I'm into Pentax because they were cheap. Uh, there was like a Canon and there was Nikon. They were top of the line. And Pentax was considered third string. But this is one of the best lenses I have. We're going to see in the slideshow exactly what this lens does. This is 24 megapixels. This uh, Alpha 6000. And I took a picture of a, a Mallard Duck. And he had to be over 50 feet away. And when you zoom up on him, you can see also fine detail at f8. It's a fantastic lens. Now, if you were to buy this lens in perfect condition, it would cost you like $100. But, you know, if someone has a lens and is dented, you could talk them down. Say, ah, come on, it's dented. Maybe it doesn't work, blah, blah, blah. And then you could probably get it for 25 bucks. Of course, it's a crapshoot. You would have to take it home, uh, do some tests, and find out whether it's really good or bad. There are super ratty uh, looking examples around that have been dragged around a lot of rough corners and maybe the elements are scratched or it looks foggy inside. That looks beautiful clear in there. I mean, that is beautiful clear. I mean, uh, when I bought the camera, it looked brand new. So I'm beginning to think I dropped it, I think. So, but that's neither here nor there because uh, I did a test and this is a beautiful lens. It was overcast to uh, partly cloudy and I took a bunch of pictures at the, uh, let's see, ISO 200 
at uh, f8 I didn't go below f8 but I certainly did 2 and 2.8 I think I did it one f11 and it's a fantastic lens uh, Pentax makes fantastic lenses these are all aluminum so aluminum is sort of sacrificial what happens is aluminum bends here where it hit and then it saves the rest of the lens from damage same thing if you notice there, there's a, a wide space between this focusing ring and a lens barrel so if the focusing ring takes a whack and gets squished it doesn't affect the alignment much not at all and uh, even though this lens has been abused I don't remember if I abused it or I bought it abused but it works fantastic it's one of the best lenses I got I have a number of Pentax lenses that I came through uh, came to me through the years and they're all really nice I used to hate 50 millimeters I had to be a wide angle I had to be a telephoto but now that I'm into mirrorless I can appreciate 50 millimeters you could leave this lens on a camera and do photo shoots for weeks I mean it takes some skill uh, to know how to use a 50 millimeter and that uh, improves your photography it does and um, I highly could recommend one of these now maybe you could get an excellent example maybe you go to a thrift store or a goodwill store or you know somebody and you can get an ex a excellent example for 50 bucks 25 bucks and you're way ahead of the game this thing looks like it was never used and whatever wear is on it is what I put on it I mean you could usually tell by the engraving if the engraving is clean then it was probably never used you know some body bought a film camera back in the day didn't know how to use it and it's sat in a shelf or in a box somewhere so uh, I found out that this is an excellent lens we're going to look at uh, a slideshow and a couple of short uh, videos at the park of course now I just want to mention I go to the park because the park's only 10 15 minute drive away from my house I could go there early in the morning before all, all the a-holes get there and uh, I could enjoy the solitude of the park and it's a big park it's like a thousand acres I've walked uh, a lot of trails there but you know over the years um, uh, you could go walk anywhere and wouldn't have to worry about any insect life like ticks or uh, uh, biting insects but now uh, you could go there and you could get uh, hammered with insects and for some reason they never used to bother me now they zoom in on me so uh, if it's cold out say today I went there and it was in the 40s and windy and it was the first day of fishing so a lot of fishermen were there under boats on the lake but I didn't see I saw one lady and her dog and that was it of course it warmed up and got a little bit sunny around midday uh, and uh, well I'm not going to go back uh, because it's probably just too crowded but I did the usual walk of stone walls and uh, uh, the white water we've been getting a lot of rain lately so I'm thinking maybe there's something to that uh, climate change I don't know about global warming because it's like uh, only got up to 45 and it's probably going to go down into the 30s tonight in April but you know climate change maybe there's something to climate change a lot of rain lately and the and the, the creek uh, has been uh, sort of overflowing but I went to the creek I went to the reeds I looked at the stone walls uh, I looked at the lake and it's the usual stuff but uh, you're going to see in the B pictures which are one-to-one uh, -one crops for this uh, video format that this is a fine lens highly recommended so let's look at it again SMC Pentax M uh, 1 to 2 or f2 50 millimeter Asaya Optical Company Japan and this is what it looks like it has a, a rubber focusing ring it's just like a rubber band they put on a, this uh, metal ring it has like a window here for the uh, focusing scale it has a depth of field scale it has a uh, engraved uh, aperture ring from 2 to 22 and it's in really excellent nice shape a couple of specks of dust I got to blow off oh made in Taiwan how about that so uh, this is an excellent example I don't know if all of them are like that but this is an excellent example but the point I want to make out is it got dropped it freaking got dropped so you can see it got dropped there and look at there's a on a focusing ring it, it must have been in this position when it got dropped absolutely and uh, it still works it works really really good uh, if you could get one of these if you want to get a 
vintage lens for your mirrorless camera and a dumb adapter, of course. I use photodiox. Oh my God, the prices, things went up, they almost doubled. And um, you can't do any better than this lens. This is the sort of lens, you know, they say, why do you need a wide angle? Why do you need a telephone? You can either back up or move closer, depending on what you take pictures of. Natively on this camera, it'll be like a 75 millimeter on a, a 35 millimeter full frame camera. But that I found no disadvantage to it. And one of the great things about it is they made these things 10 times better than they have to be. Because this is a 24 megapixel and it looks like uh, the optical quality falls apart right, right when you're at the maximum uh, magnification, when you're pixel peeping. So there's that. So without further doggy do, let's jump right into the slideshow and you check it out and you tell me. This park has a big lake, a pretty big lake. I mean, uh, uh, people go out in their uh, uh, electric powered boats and disappear sort of over horizon. So, uh, like, say, this boat, this boat was hmm, maybe thousands of feet away from me. And uh, depending on the weather, sometimes you get ripples on the water if there's a strong wind. So you look how far away that guy is, that little boat there. That's a small boat, but it's still far away. This picture was taken at F2, believe it or not. It was one of these cloudy days that I was able to shoot uh, at F2. And here's a corner, and you can see it's a little weak. Uh, but then here again, you stop down the F4, and it's like super sharp. Here's another one-to-one -one crop, nice and sharp. F2 is definitely usable, but, you know, F4, F8 is better. There's no doubt this is a fine optic that could be used in all situations. I highly recommend this lens to anybody. Uh, you see, uh, uh, here's a perfect example. Look at this. There's some reeds in the tree, had a red buds on it, and it nailed it. Nice and clean, beautiful. So here, uh, F22, this particular lens stopped at F22. So I was using a tenth of a second at ISO 100. And as well get motion blur uh, of this uh, white water. It's a fantastic lens. I mean, uh, perfect examples are available for a hundred bucks, and you can always take a, a gamble on a, a damaged uh, specimen. Look at the detail on this sign. Excellent. You know, it had uh, excellent uh, IQ, micro contrast. Excellent. Of course, it was a cloudy day. And uh, you don't really need a lens hood on an overcast day. But since the uh, the ring was damaged, I don't think I put a lens hood on it. And, you know, uh, the, these are fantastic, uh, you know, one-to-one -one crops. There's no doubt about it that this thing performed admirably. How old is it? 40, 50 years old? Uh, you know... I'm just impressed. And I used to hate 50 millimeters. I used to thought they were useless lenses. But now I think they're so cool. Uh, I have some older mirrorless cameras. I just may leave them on to uh, <laughs> just to take pictures with. Oh, look at this detail. Fantastic. All right, I go to the park. It's the same park. Ah, oh, here's a perfect example, too. This is a ducky at a one-to-one -one crop. This is sort of an overview of how far away he was. And then this is an upscale crop. I didn't do it uh, 1920 by 1080. Maybe I did it 800 by 600. And I upscaled it to 1920 by 1080. And it held its own. Excellent. Excellent lens. Of course, focusing is very critical. And uh, focusing takes time. All right, I have the button set on my mirrorless camera to go to the uh, manual focus magnifier. And then you got to sit there and go back and forth, especially if you're doing stop town focusing. Uh, all right, so here we are in the town, and it's F2. I've shot a lot of pictures at F2. I got there right before sunrise. And um, this town is somewhat shielded uh, from sun by some surrounding mountains. So the sky could get bright, but the town wouldn't be in uh, uh, direct sunlight. 
So I was shooting F2. You know, and all right, this is the thing in a town. In a town, you try to maintain, uh, be as parallel as you can uh, to the opposite side of the street. Of course, uh, sometimes you can't do that, but sometimes you can. This is, I was dead parallel to this uh, railroad green. I was pretty parallel to this building. Uh, I must have been maybe over 50 feet away from this building. And there is some depth of field at F2. I mean, uh, uh, you know, if you focus precisely. So this is like a, a some sort of cast metal sign and it has a lot of detail and central uh, sharpness is outstanding. This is a little soft, but sometimes I think maybe I, I, I jiggled a little bit. Or even at 200th of a second, uh, you could get camera blur if you jerk the, the uh, shutter button. And other times it just nails it. Stop down the F2.8 was a big improvement. There's no doubt about it. F2 is totally usable, but F2.8 is better. This is really nice, you know. And that's another thing about towns. You go to towns, there's all sorts of signs. Everything is ephemeral. Uh, people open up a business and maybe they become successful and they're there for a while. Or sometimes uh, they go out of business and they just disappear. That's why I like to go to towns and check out, you know, who's still there and uh, who's new and all that stuff. See that that guy's foundation is pretty messed up there. Of course, a brick face is has a... Uh, uh, its own challenges um, but notice there's no distortion in this not at all uh, I tried to hold the camera as uh, perpendicular to the ground as possible and I did have to straighten some of them a little bit but generally I didn't and you know you could tell the lines are straight there's no pink cushion there's no uh, uh, barrel distortion F2.8 has this little bit depth of field in F2, without a doubt. So there's this rabbit. It's got a big checkered bow tie. The lighting was just perfect where a lot of the street uh, lighting was still on. Uh, but it wasn't like uh, dark, like if uh, at, at night. Look at the uh, this portico up here, the detail on that. You know, I was just amazed, you know, that this old lens really put out. This is a 24 megapixel chip. And it's really good. Really good. 5.6 is even better. That's about as good as you're going to get, or F8. And I always like, I never use F11 or F16. Look at these lights here, how they're aberrated. There's an F2.8, but they're still aberrated. What it causes that? Is that you're not on a perfect focus on those lights here. I was stopped, stopped on the F4, and they're pretty pinpoint and, and, and uh, aberration free. And you can see the fraction stars from the, ab, the, the diaphragm. So uh, F4 is when you get your, your best uh, pinpoint images. But uh, I, I just want to say that one of the things that compounds the uh, weird uh, artifacts you get in your images, you're not in focus, all right? So you have shallow depth of field, you're not in focus. Uh, so uh, if something is inside or out of focus, it's going to have like a, a um, you know, different coma to it, without a doubt. But, you know, uh, and then those things are overexposed and you're going to get some um, internal uh, reflections of, of those. Uh, uh, and see, here's an extended image. Extended images don't suffer from that as much as pinpoint images. And then uh, extend the images, everything smeared together, and how well or good is it smeared together is what makes a lens a good lens. So the sun was coming up. I, I didn't, it isn't 5.64. It's I, that's a typo. It's at 5.6. You'll have to excuse me. But I, I really like this lens. It's a great lens. I'm glad I never got rid of it. Uh, and now I could explore with it. And it's a telephoto lens. I mean, on a 24 megapixel, I mean, you could uh, st get useful, uh, you know, 12 megapixel images, 8 megapixel images. And uh, you could always downsample them for the internet. You know, so it's not like the image is going to fall apart uh, from the chip or from the lens not performing right. Now here's a... Uh, these images are all uh, 
at 5.6, and you can see they're much, much sharper, and there's more depth of field. You know, even a 50 millimeter F8 still has somewhat shallow depth of field. Like you'll notice that things that are at infinity tend to be blurry if you don't focus at infinity. Now what's great is uh, this lens had a hard infinity stop at infinity. The adapter that I got for this lens is photodioxis right on the money. So I was happy with that. But you always got to focus and uh, confirm your focus to get your best results. You have to. I just want to mention that, you know, this is a good lens. I think you should really get one without a doubt. You can pick one up cheap. You can always finagle uh, a lower rate. You, oh, it's damaged, blah, 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 this and that. Of course, I try and buy uh, ones that are in excellent condition. Uh, I mean, you have to look at everything else. All right, it's got some damage, but is the lens clear? Is there any uh, uh, chips on the lens? Is there any scratches on the lens? Is there any fungus inside? Is there too much dust inside? So you can get one that looks beautifully, cosmetically beautiful on the outside, but still have problems on the inside. That's the thing. There's some nice churches in the town. Of course, everything is like this uh, even contrast because it was that early in the morning. So, you know, use a bright sun, would it, it pre, uh, made its own issues with the uh, heavy shadows and, and highlights. So there's that, that's like this car was all like a tricked out with a paint job. <laughs> Oh, let's just uh, say it again. Get one of these if you can. Uh, either go uh, excellent or pick up a, uh, a gamble with a, a damaged specimen.